is there a shift? I observed with we went to a cycle where we had a lot of young um, engineers and scientists, you know, uh, military officers, and we've now sent them all away. Uh, it appeared to me that there was a that they had great skills at doing the technology, but very little skill in figuring out what we do. Sure. Are you talking about the, the millennials or Generation Y? Yeah, yeah, well, no, that's yeah. a tough group. Yeah, um, from from, from you know, 23 to 35. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, they, they, they were great if you said, go code this. Right, yeah. But, you know, oh... Trying to get them to work on time and be a good corporate citizen. Yeah, it's tough. Well, they, you know, they, they were uniform. They didn't really have much choice. But, okay, yeah. Uh, but they just couldn't figure out, say, how do we solve this problem? Yeah. We'll write some code. Well, what code, code are you going to write? We made you tell me that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're obviously dealing with a different generation. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's, uh, I, I was, I was born the last year of Generation X. And, um, you know, I, I see a big difference between myself and, you know, folks that are, you know, 10 years younger than me and folks that are 10 years younger than them. And, um, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, you know, there's the workmanship is poor. They have uh, poor, mo poor motivation, and um, they have information at their hands at a second. And I think that changes their logic, um, just in the way that uh, they interact with me as a hiring manager. Um, you know, I was always taught when I go to interview, you know, I'm in a suit and a tie, and I'm 15 minutes early, and you know, these kids come in and uh, you know, 15 minutes late, and sandals and flip flops, and shorts, you know, and, um, you know, they want to make $90,000 a year in their first job out of college. So, but then they, they don't really know how to support that. So, you know, I, I don't know, you know, it's tough. It's tough to, it's tough to hire the millennials. And that's why, that's the other reason why I say that, you know, folks reentering the workforce or the older workforce has a leg up because, you know, you've been through a lot more, your, your workmanship is a lot different. Um, and a lot of times that comes through in that show. So, um, yeah, it kind of evens out, you know, there's the good and bad in both of them, so. This is probably not your area of expertise, per se, but um, the, the basic investment quality standard and something like that is going to be revised here in March. In March. Basically, they're actually been revised and revised in March. Yeah, but, and then be requiring basically 18 months to two years later to be the kind of start. And it is really different. Sure. Uh, I mean, it, it, the last couple of times it was wording and order changes. This time it's a how you how you do it change. Are companies going to ignore that, or are they going to go away away from the new standard, or are they going to try to uh, pick up people who can? If, if it's not required for companies to go back and retroactively change their for a certification to this. Right, right, but and when they next come up with certification. Um, I, that's not what I meant. No, that, as, as they, so they, there's, there's going to be they, they, they won't be able to re recertify under uh, mm -hmm. the old one, they'll have to certify under the new one. And yeah, they're not. The question is, do, do, they, do they certify under the new one, or do they just only go? Now, what I read is that companies don't have to, to change their problem management systems to the new standard because the new standard is being used. But, but when they come up again for recertification, they do. They, they, don't, they have don't have to change, they just have to, to, to certify. There's only it may two be true, but that yeah, yeah, it's it's right. the first one continues education. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you look at, if you look at the way, you, you went to a doctor 10 years ago, you went to a doctor yesterday, right? You see how different it is. You know, all your medical records right there, your x-rays are there in a minute. It's going to change, you know, and if your industry, in, uh, you know, enhances change, it's going to change. Um, and you, you have no choice, I think. Um, you know, they'll make it, you know, mandatory at some point, whether, you know, for recertification or not. As you were stating, you know, the price for talent is going up. Mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of companies are outsourcing. Yeah. So 
It's a centralized IT shop. You know, but we're seeing a change. So here's here's what's happening. So um, in in 2007, 2008, right on the onset, you know, outsource was the big word, right? And I, I thought it was what caused the recession. I remember sitting in our shop and and telling uh, Renee, like, you know, they're going to outsource us, you know. We're going to be recruiting from uh, you know, Bangladesh, you know, or wherever. And and but it's coming back. These companies that have outsourced have, you know, there's something about you know. Our ingenuity, you know, we're we're not code monkeys. We're we're very intuitive, um, you know. And, and whenever they outsourced all that stuff, they saw. And I had one manager that said, I, "I I can't change diapers and feed bottles of milk anymore. I just can't do it." And they brought it all back here. So it's coming back. I'm not seeing. I, I think the outsourcing thing is kind of a thing in the past. We are we are the outsourcing thing. Yeah. <laughs> they want to get it. I, I want to give you a little positive. Well, as, as we finished here, two years now, I've been working with the Cibola High School. They have an annual job search day, yep. and they're sophomores. And you, you just, I am 20 or so other professionals uh, go, and uh, I take a whole day shift and go, but uh, I, you take whoever comes, whoever, whatever kid is sent to your table, that's who you, and I have met so many wonderful, really great young people, and I leave there feeling so good mm -hmm. about our future mm -hmm. with people like that. And I mean, I'm getting the the blindfold throwing the dart, you know, mm -hmm. whatever whoever I get, that's what I get. And so many wonderful young people. Yeah. No, I mean they're, they're smart. There's some. I mean, just some brilliant kids out there. I mean, they're just, I still, we just talking about, I have a two-year-old, a two-year-old boy, and uh, he gets the iPad. He's not even two, he'll be two in December, and he knows how to slide it on. He knows what his password is. Um, he knows where all his little apps are, and he can go and he can play the puzzles on them already, and I downloaded him a, you know, how to learn how to develop for a toddler, and he can, you know, write very simple lines of code. It's amazing, he's 92 years old, you know? <laughs> it's amazing. It's, they're just, I mean, and, you know, just the way they learn, it's just, uh, it, it's amazing. So. Well, on that, on that uplifting note, uh, let me, let me thank you for coming, and let's thank Willis. For thank, you. Thank, you. Well, thank you. Thank you.